from Studio A in Texas, USA. This is the award-winning car talk show in real time. Coming up, we're going to review our featured vehicle of the week, the all-new 2021 Ford Bronco Sport. We got your weekly cruise in calendar. Conrad has this week in auto history. And we'll have the stories making automotive news headlines this week. It's all just ahead on this hour of the In Wheel Time Car Show. Howdy. Along with Mike out of this world, Mars, King Conrad DeLong, we need more, Jeff Zeke. We do. I'm Don Armstrong. Glad that you could join us on this Saturday. Thank you so much. It's kind of a pleasant morning here. We're supposed to have storms later on today. Oh. Just thought I'd bring that up. 70% chance. Then you don't have to fly. Oh, I'm sorry. You were flying till midnight last night. Yeah. Right now. Yeah. Staring at the Academy and all the crazy people who couldn't wait till this morning to go buy their T-shirt. They and had I to have, buy it last and night. And I have to tell you, it is truly amazing the number of people that were in line at all of these Academies that we flew over. I mean, long lines of people waiting to get in. And when they finally opened after the ball game, you know, they would only let a few people in at a time. And apparently they had all of the uh, yeah. Astro stuff kind yeah. of up front. Oh, boxes, yeah. By size. They and, by size. man, they were running them through there to lickety split. Yep. It was it was really amazing. And pretty good merchandise, people too. But I was, a little, I was a little bit uh, taken aback by the $35 baseball caps. Oh. And they sold every one they Probably so. Had. I'm going, oh, my Flat God. Flat bills. Who came yeah. up with that word, lickety split? Where did that come from? I don't that know. Really That's an old term. That my... But so you flew over all the academies, and there wasn't anybody at the Dick Sporting Goods, was No, there? nobody. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. yeah. No dicks. Well, that, the problem with that is they don't sell guns, and this is Texas, and we want our guns. But congratulations, <laughs> Astros. And yeah. Academy. Yeah. And Academy. So. And congratulations to Trevor Scott with Ford Motor Company and the new Maverick Hybrid. Trevor, Thank you, you, <laughs> how are you, my friend? I'm doing well. Yourself? Well, very good. Uh, where are we speaking to you from? I am in the uh, Detroit area. In the Detroit area. Oh, very nice. Uh, I, wish I, I wish I could say my Tigers were as uh, successful as your Astros. <laughs> yeah, you did, you stay, did you stay up and watch the game last night? I did. I did. I'm a did big you? baseball fan. So, oh, okay. Yeah, absolutely. Congrats, congrats to Houston. Absolutely. Rooting for you guys. Well, well I, you know, I think the Lions are doing better than the Texans, so congratulations on that. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, we're, I don't know about that. Well, we, we're, still, we, we're still winless here in Detroit. <laughs> well, we've got one win. But we don't care. <laughs> we we don't care. Nobody goes to the games anymore. <laughs> I was going to say. I think that they uh, they can't stuff, afford to. The, what is it? Uh, they had maybe at the most a few weeks ago thirty thousand people <laughs> inside in a seventy five thousand yeah. seats. Yeah, and, yeah. And so well, enough of that. That's not why we called. That's not why we uh, uh, wanted to rattle the cage up there in Detroit today. We want to find out about the new Maverick. First of all, I don't think a lot of people know what the Maverick is. Why don't you? Uh, get going here for us and explain everything to us yeah absolutely so maverick is it's all new for our 22 model year um very much a a white space product uh it's a compact pickup so uh picture um you know old generation ranger approximately that size it slots right below our current generation uh, ranger in our built for tough lineup but the beauty of of maverick is um it's the full package it's a standard hybrid powertrain um, and the great news this week is based on EPA certification, delivers 42 miles per gallon in the city wow. as our standard powertrain offering. Um, it's built on a unibody design. And the beauty of that is it actually increases the overall interior cabin space, gives you sort of small SUV ride and handling. But then we also have all of the built for tough capability that you would expect from a towing and payload perspective. So it's kind of the perfect package for the customer that needs a smaller truck, something that they can maneuver around a busy city or even park it in their garage, but still needs that, you know, that, that towing and payload capability. And that's the beauty of Maverick. Well, let's go back uh, just a little bit here and uh, let me just uh, give you my two cents. And I wasn't real thrilled uh, with the naming of the Mach-E Mustang. Uh, but I have to tell you that I, I noticed that you brought back the Maverick brand, and I like that. That fits. Well, that's good. Yeah, I mean, obviously, as you guys can imagine, we do quite a bit of testing when we're talking about an all-new nameplate. And uh, certainly for Maverick, we're, we're expecting a younger customer. That's what we've seen thus far. We started shipping our available uh, two-liter EcoBoost Mavericks to dealers uh, in the middle of September. 
and we are seeing a younger customer coming in looking at that product. And certainly when we were talking about naming the Maverick, uh, we had that younger customer in mind. Well, and I have to tell you that, of course, I'm old enough to know about the Net Maverick history, and uh, I just thought it was brilliant because it kind of fits in with the Mustang, the Bronco, all of that whole horse theme, and e it just works. Equine. 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 Okay, fine. Yeah, Great. It works Whatever. perfect. Fits in perfect. I'll leave it to our scholar oh, over yeah, here, really. Mr. Conrad <laughs> DeLong, to come up with that term. He's got a veterinary so degree. So what, what is the planned production numbers? And I think we asked you this last time, and you kind of sidestepped us a little bit. <laughs> are, are you allowed to talk about them now? Well, we, I mean, like, like we always say when it comes to production, we, we build the demand. But what I will tell you, one of the other – important announcements that went out this week alongside the uh, EPA fuel labels, which again are 42 miles per gallon in the city, 37 miles uh, combined for uh, that, that standard hybrid powertrain, is uh, you know, we, we communicated up front when we revealed Maverick back in June that we were only expecting to build about 40% of our overall hybrids as Maverick, or I should say 40% of our Mavericks as hybrids, I apologize. Um, and we are very close to uh, being sold out for the full 22 model year. Wow. So one of the things that we want to make sure that, you know, customers that are uh, potentially interested in that standard hybrid is that they're getting into their dealerships today uh, to place their retail order because we are very, uh, very near uh, as soon as potentially uh, this early November. I'm going to be sold out of 22 model year Maverick. Hey, Trevor, I got to I got to go ahead and interrupt you here and just say uh, you need to talk to the boss and say, Hey, man, I think we need to build more of those, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. But I think the great news, too, is, you know, our, our two-liter, our available two-liter EcoBoost engine, great performance, great fuel economy. Um, this is also where customers can get available all-wheel drive, as well as our off-road FX4 package, um, our 4,000 towing package. That engine is available. It's in dealerships today. So customers can certainly look at that as an available powertrain option as and well. And let me tell you something. I have to agree with you that it is a great powertrain. I'm currently in a Ford Ranger that has the 2-liter EcoBoost in it, and I really do like that motor. It's just a perfect fit for that size, and it's got plenty of horsepower. Oh, well, and torque, which is surprising because that's what you need in the truck, is it's got a pulling power to it that really surprises you. Yeah, So uh, yeah. And, and the hybrid is all that. Bet, uh, much more better. I mean, I just really think that uh, the, the way to go these days is the hybrid. So tell me a little bit about the hybrid system in the Maverick. So our standard hybrid is a 2.5 liter uh, Atkinson cycle. Uh, it's mated to a continuous variable transmission, um, delivers uh, 191 horsepower combined, 166 pound feet of torque. Um, so, you know, plenty of performance for that standard powertrain, but again, it's all about the fuel efficiency. It's about the 42 miles per gallon in the city. Wow. And, and obviously that's why customers are looking at it is because of that fuel efficiency. All right. It is available in a front wheel drive only. Um, and it's our available two liter EcoBoost where you can get the all wheel drive capability. So compared to, and I, I just use the F-150 since it is a half ton pickup truck. How does it compare as far as, you know, towing, hauling, uh, the, 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 obviously it's on a much less scale because it, first yep. of all, it, it, it's a, it's a crossover type, but I mean, where does it rank in all of that? Yeah. I mean, obviously the, the, the level of capability is going to be right size to the size of the truck. Right. So Maverick, you know, you're talking about standard, uh, you're talking about standard towing capability of 2000 pounds, which again, that's, you know, that's towing a couple of jet skis. And for this size truck, you know, that's that's kind of the perfect level of yep. towing capability. Yep, I got You're that. talking about payload of 1,500 pounds. Well, so, again, plenty plenty of uh, payload and towing capability, even at that standard uh, powertrain offering with our hybrid. Yeah, and then, you know, what, what they're talking about is it's a stair step. What are your needs? If your needs are something that's fuel efficient and smaller, more compact because you live in a city community and you're not going to be doing big, heavy towing, then the, the Maverick's the perfect choice. If you need something bigger, you're going to go to F-150, F-250, F-550. You can fly up the, the range of what 
based on what your needs are as, a, as an owner. So I Absolutely. have one question to ask, and of course I always ask the ones that you probably won't answer. Huh. In, the, in the history of Maverick, is there in the plans a grabber version of the new Maverick? Ooh. A grabber Ooh. version! <laughs> Coming soon to a yeah, theater yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's smiling, he's got that info. <laughs> All right. It's funny because I think you asked me that same question when I was <laughs> Yeah, but you didn't answer it last yeah. time. <laughs> I know, and I can't answer it now. <laughs> well, that, that, that's cool. You know, when, you, when we uh, look at the people who have history of what Maverick was. Old people like us. <laughs> but, but that was their performance version. Yeah, you know? I know. And, yeah. and when you look at there is a performance version of the F-150, there's a performance version of the, of the Ranger. And assumed to be and Lightning. Would, and, and Yeah, well, I would assume there'll be a, a performance version of the Maverick as well, and, and Grabber would be a perfect name. I so think when so this too, does yeah. come out, I'm going to think of you. Ooh, yeah. You oh, mean great. since you've already got the hybrid... Yeah. I mean, just juice the hybrid a little yeah. bit. You keep your miles per gallon. And then there's you your grabber. And there's your grabber. There's your grabber. You know? We figured it out it. for you. Yeah. You, yeah. Think, you pay all those engineers all that money for all, all this. All you do is call us. You know, you're going to take this interview back to the bosses and go, look at this right here. Yeah. Look what these guys are doing. <laughs> I think he's already done. We that. better capitalize I on that. appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, we don't want to steal your job. We don't want that. We no, just kind we of don't try to help you just to boost you along a little bit. This That's is all lack of sleep. That's all it is. I'll take it. I love the feedback. Yeah, I'll bet. It's like, would these guys just shut up and move on with the program? <laughs> so um, with the 2022 is now already on the ground at some dealerships, are you having much um, uh, supply chain issues getting them there? No, no. I mean, I think that the beauty of it is uh, for the standard hybrid, we were really just waiting on final state and federal emissions uh, certification testing. Okay. And that's okay. what we were able to get was the, the fuel label certifications this week. And that's the 42 miles per gallon in the city. We uh, anticipate being able to start shipping our hybrid uh, Mavericks to dealers beginning in December. And then ultimately the delivery starting with our customers in January. Uh, but as I mentioned, our available two-liter EcoBoost uh, Maverick started shipping to dealers in the middle of September, and we've seen phenomenal results. A lot of great customer feedback. I think people are just loving the truck. Well, can I just give you a little background of my uh, association with Ford Motor Company? Is that okay? Absolutely. I know. I, I've been very fortunate to have uh, some press vehicles here of late, uh, and uh, they include the Bronco, the Bronco Sport, and now the Ranger. And I have to tell you that... Uh, Ford seems to have really turned things around and really, I think, are building cars that people want and uh, are up to date on all of the styling and all of the features that are available. And I have to tell you something that I've noticed over the past few vehicles that I've had. Man, they sure do drive nice. Does that make sense to you? Overall, they just drive right. They steer good. They handle well. Comfortable. And yeah, they're comfortable cars. And uh, I, I just thought I'd throw that in there. I'm not trying to score no, points I, with you. Yeah, I'm just telling. Uh, no, I'm not. <laughs> but uh, obviously, obviously, I'm biased, so I'm going to agree with you. But um, but no, I mean, I think, and that that really is the beauty of Maverick too. As I mentioned, because of its unibody design, it it has the capability of a truck but it rides and handles like a small SUV. What is it based on? What is it based it's, on? It's based on the same platform that we build our Bronco Sport and our Escape. Okay, okay. yeah. So okay. Same, same flexible architecture, same platform, proven. Um, but with the unique top hat from Maverick. Yeah, yeah. It's all proven, proven. So are you guys planning on having a presence of Maverick at SEMA this year? We will, yeah. We actually will have a, a couple of different Mavericks at SEMA this year, and we're, we're excited for uh, the customer feedback there. And, and yeah. will the grabbers have different color schemes? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love the question. <laughs> I, I would say stay stay tuned for uh, stay tuned for to Sema sneak that in Just on. ask it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see, you know, see what the feedback is. You know, he, 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 he was he was schooled by Mike Levine. Uh, I can yeah, tell. Yeah, yeah, Look yeah. at that smile. Yeah. He knows Mike Levine. That's what it Absolutely. is. Yes. Well, and and generally, SEMA kind of gives you a little bit of a peek into the future of some of the product sure. plans. Yep. Um, might not be a full peek, but just a, a, a look under the a under taste. the skirt. I'll give you well, a little taste. A look under a the look under the tablecloth. Let me say. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, okay, the new Maverick Hybrid. Now, this is in addition to the standard Maverick. So, 
the standard Maverick also has a two liter. Yeah. So the the way to, the the way to think about it is we have two powertrains for Maverick. We have our standard uh, two point five liter hybrid. Two point five. And that's liter. the powertrain that's going to start shipping out here in December yeah. um, to customers in January. And then we have our available uh, two liter uh, EcoBoost, EcoBoost gas engine, and that's what started shipping to dealers in September. Okay. But if they want the the hybrid version, you need to go order it now because you're almost exactly. out of uh, uh, no out of uh, production. build availability. After this program, they're going to start yeah, building more. I can tell yeah. already. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I would say I would say definitely. You know, you'll be able to find our two liter EcoBoost in dealer stock. So if you're interested, please you know visit your local Ford dealerships. They'll have that available for you. But yeah, to your point, if you guys are are interested in uh, that 2.5 liter standard hybrid, certainly get into your dealers to place a retail order because we expect to be sold out very soon. You know, how lucky are you? You get to get on a, a brand new vehicle and, you know, you're going to be on this for at least a few more months. So uh, it's got to be good news for you. Oh, I'm going to be on this for a while. So trust me, we're, we're excited about the launch and excited about the excitement around the product. Well, Trevor, it's great to talk to you. Thanks so much for uh, taking a ribbing from us this morning. And uh, we, we really appreciate it. And we appreciate all of your knowledge and information about the new Maverick. Absolutely. Hey, and, and go grab some breakfast. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, gentlemen. Thanks. appreciate you having me. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Appreciate yeah. you. That yeah. was fun. Yeah, yeah it was well, fun. I haven't seen the, the preview of the Maverick. Uh, cars at SEMA. We have seen some of the preview of the uh, Bronco I haven't, cars. I haven't seen SEMA. a whole lot of Maverick in general right. because they're not at the dealership well, they're just, well, yet. They're just now dropping at the dealership. Exactly. But, uh, you know, what a great idea of Ford's to bring back the true compact truck. You know, you've talked about it for years how. What were the compacts, the Rangers, the, the Bla not the Blazers, but the Rangers, the Colorados, the Canyons, used to be compacts. Now they're all kind of a mid-sized truck. Well, did you um, see what I have out in the driveway right now? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pretty cool, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah, it I, is. I, I caught my eye when I drove in. I was like, but again, that's because you hit it. You ran into it. <laughs> yeah, it, it, <laughs> it is. But Where you know, the Maverick's going to be. You get into it, and it doesn't feel like a midsize. It feels like the old Ranger. It's small inside. It's compact. Cool. Yeah. Hey, if you'd like to get in touch with us, shoot us an email. The address is info at inwheeltime dot com. You didn't ask me about my reunion last week. How was your reunion last week? It was very good. I thoroughly I enjoyed it. I saw some of the pictures. Yeah. Yep. And uh, sorry that George couldn't make it. And I realized he had some family you know, things he had to do. Yeah. Sure. And you know, it's funny because there were a, a number of people that I was actually really looking forward to seeing that couldn't make it for one reason or another. And oh, I understand are. that sort yeah. of thing. And uh, But, you know, as I will say this, that uh, there... Uh, was a list of people that are no longer on the face of this earth with oh, us. Wow. And it was four pages of oh, wow. people. Oh, wow. I, I was quite surprised at that. But it was wow. great to see everybody that's still standing and walking, talking. That's great. Now, didn't you say it was your 50th class? I didn't say that. No, you didn't. <laughs> I didn't. Oh, well, I was just asking then. I, yeah. That was my impression. Was it? Yes. Can't imagine where you'd get that from. Probably, Probably picked that up from the Ford guy. <laughs> you know, oh, well, we can't discuss that. <laughs> well, <laughs> if, uh, if Trevor's still listening, listening, uh, Randy Borcherding from Paint House is with us on Facebook, and I didn't read it until after Trevor got off the air. He's inviting Trevor to come down to the Griot's garage and check out the Ranchero Randy built. Oh, that's yeah. Yeah. That's right. And you know, uh, John Gray is a big Griot fan over at mm -hmm. uh, Gulf Coast Auto Shield. Anyway. Uh, time now for the cruise in calendar before you uh, break open that other drink that you have there. God. Uh, let okay. me ask you, is, is that is that spiked? I mean, it's pink. I'm thinking uh, some sort of vodka uh, lemonade kind of Manic thing. Manic melon. Manic. Yeah, you know what? That, that looks like tequila. Boone, that looks like Boone's Farm. Boone's Annie Green. <laughs> no, it's Annie Green Springs. Annie, Annie Green Springs. Springs. I was thinking the of uh, Strawberry Hill. Anyway, cruise in Strawberry calendar. Dog, well, 2020. Um, uh, November 6th is the Rebel Roundup in Needville, which is usually a very, very good meet. And then December 11th. Neederville. No. Neederville. Neederville. No, he's in Nieder Nederland. It's the other direction. Gotcha. And then December 11th at uh, Legacy Ford Toys for Tots Car Show All right. at uh, Legacy Ford in Rosenberg. Mm. Back to you, Don. All right. Thank you very much. Time now for this hour's car review. What? The 2021 Ford Bronco Sport. It's an SUV. It's based on the Ford Escape. 
There are several trim levels available. There, the pace, the base, the big bend, the outer banks, the badlands, and the first edition. Now, Kenny Rogers didn't have anything to do with this because I knew I knew you were thinking about that. I didn't name that. He beat me to it. Uh, I had the first edition 4x4. This is a small SUV crossover. Uh, it's all new for 2021. Square body style. Kind of reminds me of the Land Rover. What is it? The Defender? Uh, not the Range, Range. Rover. That, no, not the Range Rover. That's too big. This, I think, is the Defender size. It's, it's small. It's compact. But it's got that square body look. It's really nice looking. Uh, five passengers, all new for 2021. Uh, wraparound grill with integrated headlights in the wraparound grill. It's cool. It yeah. is. It is just cool. Yeah. Blacked out C pillar. So it makes the whole uh, upper greenhouse area uh, look really cool because you can't really see all of the details of the C pillars, the B pillar, all that stuff. Uh, square, flat lift gate. What I liked about it, the overall exterior styling. What could use improvement? Absolutely nothing. I think it's a great-looking vehicle. Interior highlights include compact interior. As I mentioned before, you sit close to your neighbor. Uh, cloth seats with the rotary shifter on the console. Love that. Well-laid-out dash with high-mounted infotainment screen that's easy to use. The Sync 4 system, I think it's called. Configurable instrument cluster as well. Rubber floor mats. Hmm. Rubber floor mats. You hearing me? Yeah. Not plastic. Rubber. Well, whatever. Oh, okay. Rubber carpeted. floor mats. And it's got carpeted floor mats over the top of it. So you pop those out of there. Man, I'm telling you, you wipe that off with a sponge and, uh, you so know. It's, a, it's got rubber Bronco baby bumpers. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Good. I love that. You know, that. in case you squirt something on there. Yeah, and clean it right up. Mm -hmm. uh, plenty of room in the cargo area with the uh, second roll, uh, row of seats that fold flat. Uh, what I liked about it, this thing is ready for camping and for the kids in the back seat. All right. This is, it's, Hold uh, that picture. The top comes off like this. That is cool. No. No. Oh. <laughs> That was just done for photographs. No, it to looks show like the some type of no. that, mechanism. That, put that, the is the, that is the Bronco. That's not the Bronco Sport. Oh. <laughs> oh. Well, okay. Right. Let's mm -hmm. Moving on. <laughs> moving on. I wasn't looking. Uh, all of these like that? Yes. Pretty much. Oh. So let's not, uh, let's not further the Bronco. The error here. Uh, the error here. This is the Bronco Sport. What could use improvement? Nothing. Why did you do that? Conrad's touching my stuff. It has a it has a two liter EcoBoost four cylinder engine. The three cylinder engine is standard. Don't get that. Get the two liter EcoBoost. Mm -hmm. Two hundred forty five horsepower. Two hundred seventy five pound feet of torque. Eight speed automatic transmission. Uh, it got ready for this. 26.2 miles wow. per gallon, over 541 miles. I didn't know that. You I put a lot of miles on. I didn't know that I had driven that far in it, but whatever. Cool truck. What I liked about it, the uh, engine and the tranny combination, they work well together with the eight-speed automatic transmission. What could use improvement? I don't know. Not, well, not that I know of. And just our conversation with Trevor, you know, that I'm sure that's the same powertrain that is in the uh, the Maverick, which will be just as well matched in the Maverick, too. What I liked about the ride and handling, it rides great. Easy to maneuver, too. What could use improvement? Nothing. So here's the pricing. Base trim price on this is $32,660. Price as testament, tested is estimated at $40,000. And you say, well, why, why can't you tell me what the price is? Because you will see by this, it says right here. Vehicle not it's a, for sale. Vehicle not for sale. It's a pre-production model, so they don't have any of that information on this sticker. Notice well, that it doesn't have any miles per gallon, none of that, because when they made this, then this sticker that goes along with the car, they didn't have that information yet. Because the manufacturers, believe it or not, they don't price these things until they're just About getting to ready right, right. to send them out the door. And then, you know, again, listening to Trevor is he had to wait for the MPG rating yes. before they could start shipping. So uh, get this. The base model price on this, base model, you can get into this if you order it because they don't have them usually at the dealership, Twenty four four eighty five. Wow. Yeah. Nice. So 
Uh, as far as competitors are concerned, the VW Tiguan starts at 26,920. Jeep Cherokee, 27,210. And the RAV4 is 26,350. Those are the competitors. And that, my friends, is your review of the Bronco Sport, Sport which is not really related to the Bronco itself. You were pointing at something? Yes, you're, you're in A segment. <laughs> And the Bronco Sport is available at the dealerships right now. They yes, ha- they yes. have them on the ground. Yes, it is. Yes, well, if if they have them. Well, if they have if they have anything. Because I was going to say uh, that still continues to be a problem with uh, with car dealers. They can't get cars. They can get them, and they do get them, but it's not at the level that you would expect. And of course, you know the chip shortage continues to be a problem, uh, and they're just unable. By, by the way, I do have a story. Uh, but I'm going to just do that story right now. Uh, let's see if I can find that. Is this the GM? Yes, the GM story. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of doing this out of order, but I'm going to do it anyway. General Motors is more than halfway through shipping newly assembled pickup trucks that it had parked due to a shortage of semiconductor chips. Right. Um, it wasn't immediately clear if the trucks are being shipped with the microchips installed. GM competitor Ford Motor Company has been trying to ship unfinished trucks to dealership lots, even though the chips have not been installed. The global chip shortage has forced automakers like GM to idle production, or in some cases, mostly build vehicles and then park them until the necessary chips can be installed, allowing those vehicles to then be shipped to dealers. To expedite transportation of newly built vehicles to dealers, GM bought a number of car haulers. GM buying car haulers to deliver them from factories to distribution centers. Uh, Automakers also allow dealers to pick the vehicles up themselves Mm -hmm. in some locations. Well, yeah, but that's going to be, you know, dealers that are close by to wherever the production facility is. Correct. But, you know, there are production facilities all over right. the world, for that matter. And, and the good news is that's going to help put some inventory on their lots. You know, yes. whether it's GM shipping them or them picking them up. Because right now, you drive past a lot of these dealerships and they are empty yeah. of inventory. Yeah, or you see what they do have in inventory parked sideways, right. lengthways up and there then, at the freeway. And then when a truck does show up, 17 salesmen are out there standing <laughs> around it calling their customers and yep. say, you got to be the first one here. Hurry. Get yeah. here quick. And yeah. there's no discounts. Yep. No, there's yeah, no. There's really no, the incentive. incentives. Cars are, up there incentives have, have all yeah. gone away, too. Hey, the In Wheel Time Car Show streams on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and InWheelTime.com. Podcasts are available from your favorite podcast source. In Wheel Time Car Show continues right after this quick break. When you're ready to shop Chevrolet, we know one that should be at the top of your list. Bayway. Locally owned by Houston-born and raised Daryl Wisniewski, Bayway brings a sense of family to your Chevrolet buying experience. When you're in the market for a new or used vehicle, you now have a place to go. And get this, Bayway will beat any competitor's written price on the new vehicle you choose or pay you $1,000. Bayway Chevrolet in Pearland is only eight minutes from the Beltway and Highway 288. Whether it's online or in person, you'll be welcomed like one of the family. BaywayChevrolet.com Tailpipes and Tacos, Houston's premier monthly cruise-in, will return Saturday, December 18th to the Loopy Tortilla Tex-Mex in Katy. Tailpipes and Tacos wants to thank all of the participants and fans who have enjoyed the collector cars, hot rods, customs, originals, and resto mods, and everything in between. We'll be taking a break for Thanksgiving and Autorama, but we'll be back for a great Christmas cruise-in on December 18th, so make plans now. You know that Tailpipes and Tacos is the Houston area's coolest cruise-in, a place you'll see friends, family, and the finest cruise-in cars in the Houston area. It all happens at the Loopy Tortilla Tex-Mex in Katy on the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard, just south of I-10. Get your ride ready for a very special Christmas cruise-in, Loopy style. It's Tailpipes and Tacos, Saturday, December 18th. The In Wheel Time Car Talk Show will be there, too. Let's celebrate the Christmas season together at the next Tailpipes and Tacos on December 18th. We'll see you then, weather permitting. Gulf Coast Auto Shield has moved to a more convenient location. Now you can visit John Gray and his staff of dedicated professionals at their new shop on the South Sam Houston Parkway between Belford and Airport in Southwest Houston. Gulf Coast Auto Shield is the best at paint correction and ceramic coatings. 
Clear bras and custom wraps are specialties that only Gulf Coast Auto Shield installs with award-winning accuracy. And all their services come with a warranty. Lamborghini, Aston Martin, Porsche, and Ferrari owners depend on Gulf Coast Auto Shield for their specialty services, and you should too. The in-wheel time Corvette and Cutlass have both been massaged by Gulf Coast Auto Shield, so isn't it time your vehicle visit their new shop in Southwest Houston? Call John Gray today at 832-930-5655 or visit online at gcautoshield.com. That's gcautoshield.com. Paint, coatings, wraps, and more at gcautoshield.com. <laughs> 